So on a football-heavy Sports Max Zone show for this Tuesday, let's switch things up a bit now with some cricket. The West Indies Regional four-day tournament is set to resume Wednesday, and there has been some notable happenings off the field between rounds, as former West Indies Test Vice Captain and former Jamaica Captain Jermaine Blackwood has been dropped from the Scorpions team ahead of round six, while Leeward Islands Hurricanes head coach Stuart Williams notified the Leeward Islands Cricket Board that he will not be renewing his contract with the franchise. Trinidad and Tobago Red Force, in the meantime, have bolstered their squad with the inclusion of West Indies fast bowler Shannon Gabriel, all-rounder Yannick Kara, Karia, and left-handed batsman Jed Gooley. And here are the current point standings after reading off four consecutive victories over the Guyana Harpy Eagles, TNT Red Force, CCC, and Jamaica Scorpions following their early February opening round loss to West Indies Academy. The Leewards Hurricanes have climbed to 81.2 points to displace the Windward's Volcanoes as leaders. Barbados Pride in third and defending champions Harpy Eagles fourth. The Scorpions Red Force, West Indies Academy and CCC occupying the bottom half of the table. Joining us to discuss the moving paces, pieces on and off the field, veteran commentator Joseph Reds Pereira. Reds, welcome to the Sports Max Zone. Always great talking to you. Can we start with the Stuart Williams story? Saw it over the weekend that he has informed the Leeward Islands Cricket Board that he won't renew his contract. Um, what are you making of that story? Well, he could have just decided that life goes on. He's got a, a few things left to do as, as a coach. I don't know if he's offered um, another job somewhere or maybe lands some Mariah, some internal disagreement, maybe not seeing ITI with the selectors, maybe not getting the side he, he, he wanted. Um, I mean, he leaves them, Lance. They're topping a league at 82, as you just mentioned. Yeah. Um, nobody walks out when, when their side is, is heading for a championship. Yeah. Um, and you're, you're right. They're on form. Four wins on, on, on the bounce. And um, yep. looking as if, you know, they, they, they could go on to win this championship based on their current form. Jermaine Blackwood Reds had started the regional first class season looking to get a lot of runs to uh, press for a recall to the West Indies team having been dropped. But things have gone in the opposite direction for him. Yes, well, the Jamaica board and the selectors gave him every chance, uh, took away the captaincy, gave it to, to, to Brandon King. I said, look, we want you to concentrate on your batting. But it, it hasn't gone that way. And, I mean, his career is really at the cross-crossroads, you know. I, I, I don't know if he can change franchise or he can change clubs. Uh, but, um, you know, what has gone wrong? Well, that, that will take a long time to understand. But uh, confidence must be very, very low. And being left out of a Jamaica side doesn't help. Yeah, and um, his uh, batting average for the series so far is 9.77 reds, a high score of 26. So, um, Jermaine Blackwood in a, in, a, in a tough spot here at the moment. Uh, TNT Renforce reds have, have struggled in red ball cricket now for a very, very long time. Even while they have been winning some white ball trophies, the, the red ball um, version of the game has, has, has eluded them. We see them bolstering their, their, their squad here with uh, Gabriel coming in and uh, Yannick Carria and uh, Jed Gooley, who is a pretty solid batsman as well. Uh, what do you make of the Red Force's struggles over the years with the red ball? Well, there's a feeling by a few friends of mine in Trinidad there's too much white ball cricket being played um, in Trinidad and not enough uh, three-day and two-day red ball, uh, uh, both at the Division One and Division Two. Uh, if you look at this squad, um, well, I mean, minus Bravo, which was a real setback for the coaching staff, this lineup actually looks maybe the best squad that they've had. Gooley played brilliantly in the last game, uh, got run out and got injured and had to miss the second game. So he brings a lot uh, to the batting. They've added, I think, y Yannick, uh, for the first time this year, I think, I'm going to stretch my memory because we've had the break, Lance. Yes. And Gabriel, who's been playing white ball, 
should be fairly fit, which has always been his problem, should be fairly fit and in cricket recently. So he should hit uh, the road running. But they are digging deep from 51, racing up the ladder. And I would think that it looks like leewards, windwards with Barbados and, and maybe Guyana looking to pick up as many points and bonus points, very important. Yeah. Um, just to go back to the point that you just made about one of your friends suggesting that there's too much white ball cricket played in, in TNT, because I don't think TNT have won a regional four-day title in about 20 years, Reds. And um, yeah. you know, that, that, that would stretch back to when Brian Lara was playing. And uh, I, I, I suspect that you know, their, their lack of success in, in red ball cricket um, is probably a little bit deeper than you know, the current analysis is suggesting. Well, there's always been a debate on, you know, um, uh, the first class season, whether it should be played over two days, three days. Uh, th that has been the debate. They, they needed more cricket for the, the players, and they, they have not been getting that. The white ball, of course, is a great sell. It's easy to find a sponsor. Um, there's rapid success. It finishes very quickly. Uh, the red ball game hasn't had the kind of success. I, mean, I, I remember the, the days of, you know, P Paragon and the, the days of Queen's Park, uh, the, the days of all the top clubs in Trinidad. It used to be really very, very good cricket to play. I mean, I've, I've actually lived in Trinidad for a club season. Uh, so I, I know looking back what it was, of course, so much of change. But maybe it is for the clubs, uh, the executive, uh, to raise this very question that that, the, that you, you you have just raised, Lance. Yeah, a lot of questions, Reds, because of course, um, as a Trini myself, I would really want to see the Trinidad and Tobago Red Force getting back to winning ways where Red Bull cricket mm -hmm. is concerned. What do you make, though, of the Leeward Barbados fixture that's set to start? Very cr cr crucial fixture. It brings, it really brings um, the the side that is in fact third against the, the, the leaders, and it should bring uh, very good cricket. I, I mean, I'm looking forward to high scores as we move towards getting a final selection and maybe a camp uh, for the team to go to England. I would like to see big scores, but I don't believe you can wipe off uh, the Barbados chances against the Leewards totally. Um, they can push the Leewards a bit who have had good days and bad days. Um, so that should make some very, um, very interesting cricket, Mar Mariah. Yeah, and the Lee Woods, you know, they're leading where batting is concerned. They have some top wicket takers as well, rightfully leading the table. So we'll be paying very, very close attention, Red, to this competition. And we will link you again soon so we can talk about some of the top performers, the top performances. And, of course, you know, as we continue to follow the cricket. So thank you so much for stopping by. Take care. And if I may say, I've got my 13 that has been selected already, but not announced for the World Cup. Yeah, you, you'll have to share that with us too. So we'll talk again really soon, okay? Take care. Bye. Bye. All right, Joseph Reds Pereira there, of course, joining us here on the Sportsmax. So let's take a quick break.